Season 50, War Number 7, my team is going to be Gore, Kushala, and Bullseye. And this is the biggest war I've had this season so far. I have 9 fights, including the boss, and I'll be taking the boss with Gore. Um, we're going to start the war with 3 Bullseye fights, and then we have a Kushala mini boss, and then 8, or I don't know where I got 8 from, but we have 5 Gore fights, 1 path, and then the uh, mini bosses and boss for him. So we're going to start on path 1 against this Spidey Supreme here. This is a pretty easy fight for Bullseye. Uh, he obviously can't miss, so we really only need to worry about the actual regen. Um, so we need to keep it a little bit low, but also Spidey Supreme's health pool is not very big, so I can afford to let him have a few regens. He also pushes himself pretty far back with his special attacks, as does Bullseye, so he doesn't benefit from the regens too much, and they also don't heal for that much when he does have them, so... Once we get to this SP2, he's pretty much going to be lights out. We also have power backs on just in case. Um, but I'm going to trigger my evade and then go for an SP2. We're going to gain a lot of power back and then we're just going to kill him before he can do anything else. So that is the first fight of the war. Next up, we're going to fight Spot on node 10. And uh, in this fight, we want to use a power star 1 boost just so we can get the clarity charge up as fast as possible. Because we're going to open the fight by throwing an SP1. And that's going to give us a true accuracy and also build us a lot of combo. So um, I don't know why I didn't throw it immediately, but I'm going to, yeah, he auto blocked there. And uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know why I'm not throwing it immediately because that's totally what I should be doing. So I trigger my evade, go for the SP1 and then throw it. We have true accuracy now, we have clarity up. And at this point, we just need to make sure that he doesn't throw his SP1 because that's going to give himself a buff immunity, which is going to trigger Masochism, and we don't really want him to trigger Masochism, so... Uh, we're going to bait his SP2, um, and once he throws it, he's going to have five of his spots, but again, Bullseye can't miss, so it's not too big a deal. I didn't mean to trigger Masochism there, but it's not too big a deal, it just means he gets some regen, and uh, we trigger his Untouchable by whiffing the attack in the middle of his special, throw the sp2 we have power backs active and then this is going to finish the job i believe oh no it doesn't but an sp1 right after will so uh lights out for spot next up we're going to be on path four in section two we're going to start against the spider hem and this is the last bullseye fight of the war he's going to do a pretty good job of it again i think i have my power start one boost still up so we're going to start by throwing an sp1 get the true accuracy and then uh clarity is going to be pretty much uh prevented from there uh, we have 8 hits in the combo meter, but we still have the true accuracy, so we don't really need clarity at that point. We just need to get it eventually, uh, so that we can start throwing SP2s and stuff. I have a power sting on myself, but it's okay for now. He's also going to be fully unblockable for the rest of the fight, uh, because he reached 3 debuffs and steady buildup triggered. Um, that's okay. Uh, the... The power sting is gone, so I'm going to go for an SP2 pretty soon. I want him to throw his SP1 first. Uh, the SP1 will place a taunt on me, so my attack will be lowered, but also um, we need to throw the SP2 anyway, so we get it thrown, we do a decent bit of damage, and we get power backs to bring us back to an SP1. Throw the SP1, does a good bit of damage, uh, not going to be enough to kill him, because again, taunt, inequity, all that stuff. Uh, he's a tanky pig on this node. I forget about the unblockable just because I'm an idiot, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to bait his SP1, that's going to be lights out for the pig. Um, so yeah, pretty easy fight for Bullseye, and then next up we're going to start the gore fights, starting with Guardian on, uh, what is this node, 24, uh, no, not 24, it's, uh, it is 31, and this is a, uh, fight that gore has a very interesting mechanic for, um, because gore is immune to heal block effects, and this node has a heal block debuff on it. Meaning that I'm not going to be uh, at risk of having that heal block on me and the opponent getting too many debuffs to scale with the nodes. So uh, We have an undermine at the start of the fight, so I don't need to worry about building clarity while the opponent is stunned because he can't auto block anyway with the undermine. So at this point, it's just about getting to the SP3, throwing it without the power sting on us, and then that's going to be lights up for Guardian. Sometimes I will block the SP1s just in case because... They can hurt you a little bit if you get hit by them, um, because Guardian, if he crits on them, then he's going to do the shock and stuff, so 
Uh, it's not going to be too fun if we do get hit, so I will block a couple, and I did. Uh, so we throw the SP-3, and this Guardian is just about dead, so... Um, that is going to be my path fights for this war, and next up we're going to fight our first mini-boss on node 37 against infamous Iron Man. So Idum here has another personal space regen node, and he also has enhanced recovery, so it is going to be quite a lot of healing. However, Gore can cover all of that with despair and just the poisons from his personal kit, so that's not really an issue. It basically just is an Idum without nodes that I have to uh, just be good at, so... Um, clarity is not going to be an issue in this fight, we get so much of it because we trigger so many buffs and we can play aggressive, there's nothing really stopping us from playing aggressive, so I have 6 uh, shadow magic and I'm going to start doing my double mediums, he throws his sp1, not too big a deal, uh, we go for some more double mediums and I'm going to go for about how many stacks of debuffs, uh, that's 12 of each and here comes 14 of each and I think I, th I drop it after that and that's going to finish the job, so. Uh, yeah, one of the easiest mini-bosses I've ever done. Uh, Gore just completely shuts the fight down as long as I know what I'm doing. And then we're gonna go on to a much mildly more harder, I guess. Uh, mildly harder uh, mini-boss, and that is against Captain Sam on Node 42. And the thing that I kind of overlooked in this fight was um, Captain Sam's SIG ability failing my bleeds. Uh, which will do instant rupture damage to me. I thought about it like a couple hours before taking the fight because it wasn't on my mind when I was doing assignments. Um, but luckily the fight's not going to be too bad because that damage from his SIG only scales with base attack. So there's not too much damage that I'm actually going to take from it. I activated combat regen just to gain a little bit of healing at the start of the fight. Uh, just to counteract a little bit of that r rupture if I do happen to get some on me. Um... I'm perfectly fine throwing attacks while he's stunned and the protection is up because um, I'm not really going to take a lot of one eye open damage when I'm not dealing a lot of damage during the stun, so uh, I'm going to go for a heavy attack there, get rid of it, go for an SP3 in just a second, and it's not going to do too much damage because uh, Gore's biggest weakness, ironically, is like armor up buffs, so uh, the SP3 is not going to do a lot of damage at all strictly because of those. Also, we had a cowardice on us from lock on too, which is worth mentioning, so uh, that didn't do a lot of damage, but we're going to build back to another SP3, and then that's going to finish the job if I remember. Um, so 95% health, we're still taking that instant rupture sometimes, but it's only doing like a percent of our health, so who cares. Go for a heavy attack, go for one more double medium, and then he's going to be dead uh, with this SP3, I believe. And uh, yeah, we didn't have the cowardice on us, so... Uh, smooth sailing from here. Uh, you can see it does plenty of damage and not even like crazy damage either like Gore's SP3 does a lot so yeah that's gonna be the uh, node 42 fight. Next up we're fighting node 43 Serpent and I almost took this with Kindred. Um, I just thought Kushala would have been smarter and safer so uh, I could probably do this with either one. I do think Kindred could do this fight as well. Uh, as long as you have Odin pre-fights, but I'd want the Odin pre-fights to do this fight with Kushala anyway. So, um, this Serpent, uh, we just want to do Kushala things and uh, make sure to have a blue blessing active at all times so that we can block unblockable attacks, uh, which is really only the first of his specials, but just in case, we do want to have that around. So, um, he throws his SB1, we get another parry right after. And the incinerates are doing a really good job right now, but um, he's gonna get his resistance up soon. And then he's gonna start taking a lot less damage from them just because he's a tanky boy. Um, we are gonna regen a lot of the damage from blocked hits, also regen from the fear debuff. And um, we do keep our aggression prowess under control a good bit just because I'm playing quite aggressive in this fight. And Serpent is also playing quite aggressive with me in this fight, so. Uh, it ended up being a pretty easy time uh, managing aggression regen um, because I got just pretty nice AI for it. So the servant is a rank three, however he is unduped, so I don't need to worry at all about the second life or not second life, but uh, death immunity because uh, once we get there, once we get him to zero percent, he's actually gonna die. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we block another SP1. The incinerates are just melting him at this point mess up the decks at the end of the sp1 but he's dead so it's okay a fight that i actually did worry about quite a bit but um because he was unduped there just wasn't a lot of threat left to it so 
Next up, we'll fight Bullseye on node 49. This is a pretty interesting fight for Gore because if you don't know, Gore gains a regen every time he would be bled and has a bleed shadow magic. So because of the fact that Bullseye bleeds me on basically every hit, um, we gain like a crap ton of regen. So it's pretty nice. Uh, once we get clarity up too, then he can't use his killer instinct. So that's even better. Like I'll go right there and do a light ending combo again and he just can't evade because of clarity so um you don't even need clarity to do this fight um because i think gore could do it regardless i just would have to be a lot more aware of the evades and as long as i do that there's not a lot of, a lot of risk of death because i am regening so absurdly much like i have nine regens right now and those do scale with missing health so once i trigger a bleed and I'm at high health, they don't really heal me that much, but once my health starts getting lower, then um, they start taking a lot more. Um, I'm trying to get to an SP3, I'm gonna start placing Shadow Magic at this point, and uh, I run into its SP1, which is annoying, but it's not too big a deal. We're gonna regen a lot of it, as you know. So um, we placed a few more debuffs, I'm gonna go for an SP3 in a very short amount of time. And uh, I think I go for one more double medium, and that's going to be it. Or, no I don't, I just kind of drop it, because uh, I was pretty confident that this would kill. And he goes from 45 all the way down to uh, 45, 32, all the way to 4%. I just chuck the relic out there, and then he dies from the damage over time. So, one more fight this war, and that is going to be against this Mysterio boss. And Loki, I think... Mysterio is like top three hardest tech defenders for Gore to take, um, Gore specifically, because with Gore you want to play really aggressively just to keep your shadow magic upkeep and your debuff upkeep going. And Mysterio doesn't really allow that because once he throws either of his special attacks he's going to make it to where you can't really hit him for a certain amount of time. So, so I start by baiting Mysterio's SP1s and that's going to trigger his damage reflect so we don't really want to hit him during that period of time. Um, but then I realized, yeah, this isn't working, we're just losing too much shadow magic, and I'm not really able to get any debuffs off, so eventually in this fight I'm gonna change my strategy and start baiting Mysterio's SP3s with an indestructible boost, um, and because the SP3 only gives him an attack increase and we don't need to worry about um, not being able to hit him afterwards, it seemed like the play to go for at the time. So that's what's gonna happen. Um, I might bait a couple more SP1s before I completely change my game plan, but we're going for the ricochet intercepts. He finally plays ball, and now we're kind of chilling. Uh, I do absolutely love with Gore that most of the time you don't have to worry about having clarity just because of the amount of buffs he gains and just your aggressive playstyle. So I'm gonna start going for or going for pushing Mysterio to an SP3 at this point. We throw the relic. I'm gonna go for another double medium. I throw my SP3. I'm at 75%, he's at 78 My SP3 isn't going to do too much damage because, again, I didn't have a lot of debuffs. But he's going to go down to uh, 59, and I get a lot of stuff back from powerbacks. And I also gain uh, one of each shadow magic buff, meaning we have a much more increased rate of placing debuffs. So Eden SP3, this is just going to give me a lot of power too. So we're really close to my next SP3. Um, I'm going to go for a Ricochet or Bait Heavies actually. And uh, Bait Heavy, go for another double medium. We're placing a lot of debuffs now because we have a lot of buffs. Uh, we're at 73%. He throws an SP1, which is fine. It just means I can't hit him for a second. Uh, we're also losing upkeep on our buffs and debuffs, but again, that's fine. We have a lot of them still. I'm going to go for one more double medium, go for another SP3, and I'm hoping this is lights out on Mysterio. Uh, he's at 28%, we have again a good bit of debuffs, and yeah, this SP3 is going to kill him, and that is going to be my 9 fight war. Again, the biggest war I've taken this season so far. Really proud of how it went, Gore just absolutely crushed it, Bullseye absolutely crushed it, Kushala crushed her one fight, so yeah, really solid war for me. Uh, we did end up winning the war by quite a bit. Our opponents waited a while to actually in move up on the map, and I guess uh, once they saw that it was kind of over, they uh, started throwing some random deaths. So uh, we won the war, and that makes us 6 and 1, and we are in top 10 masters, which is really huge because I've never been there before, 
and the alliance as a whole has never been there before so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one